When I started, it felt like I was drinking out of a fire hose. It is a bit of like a roller coaster. It's been great and it's been crazy. I didn't even know where to start. I've never had a job this challenging before. We're going out and facing like the greatest issue of our time. I cannot believe I'm helping in something like this. A man in his 30s from Washington state is the first person in America to be diagnosed with coronavirus. It's very disturbing. How worried should we be? When I first started hearing about COVID, I didn't quite understand it. I didn't understand the significance of it. I didn't think it was going to be bad. And then March came. Other countries began to shut down things and cruise ships began to have people being sick and quarantined. The CDC put out some pretty stern warnings. The pandemic was beginning to spread across the United States. The virus is in 36 states and Washington, D.C. And then we started hearing about the deaths. It feels like someone's stabbing you in your sides when you try to inhale. Essentially, the lungs start to drown. You can have a drop of blood pressure mm. and multi-organ failure, and that's how it really causes death. The death tolls were climbing. The number of cases and infections were climbing. Every step of the way, as the numbers kept going up, I kept thinking, this can't be happening. We really have not seen anything like this before. The emergency of the COVID-19 pandemic really strained local and state health departments. When COVID hit, it was all hands on deck. And we were, I think at that time, you know, working six, seven days a week and, you know, long hours. And, you know, our, our staff was really, really on the verge of, you know, being burnt out. The backdrop is a public health infrastructure that has been weakened over particularly the last decade, has not really had the resources to keep up with the technology and the workforce and all of the things that are really needed for a robust response to the pandemic. So the health departments needed support and they needed support in lots of ways. We wrote this proposal to the CDC to advocate for the need to support the health department. And it was very quick, <laughs> but we got it. And then we were off and running. CDC awarded us over $45 million to be able to hire over 700 surge staff across the country. This response that we've had working on COVID-19 has without a doubt been the largest emergency response that we've been engaged in. The ask was for field staff in every state, tribal organizations, territories, and six big cities. And the ask was to do this in short order. It was really a tight timeline. We had over 70 jurisdictions that we needed to touch base with to find out their needs. Do they need case investigators? Do they need EPIs? People working in the lab. And a lot of what I heard was we're hiring a lot of people and we need a lot of laptops and we need it very fast. We call it surge staffing and that's exactly what it was. It was not going to be a slow rollout. We had pretty ambitious deadlines to get folks hired as soon as possible. It was intense. We all knew people who were personally impacted with this infection, who died from this. We know the impact on our community. We know the impact on our schools, on the economy. Every minute counts in terms of saving lives. We were beginning to get daily calls. How many of you hired today? So the team felt a lot of pressure. We were trying to get these public health professionals in place to help our country as quick as possible. And we needed to do it working remotely with a team that was spread across six time zones. I rolled on with all of these logins and, hey, here's your Zoom account. What? I need my own Zoom account? And then I'll say, oh yeah, I need my own Zoom account. It was absolutely an avalanche. It was a ton of work to be done. It was really 24-7. Early mornings, late nights. I remember just going through weeks where one day just bled into the next. We definitely had deadlines back to back and we were moving at breakneck speeds. So many pieces that all had to come together. And we tried to work really fast to get folks hired and I think we did a great job with our turnaround time.
in Hidalgo County about June, July, going even into August 2020, deaths were on the rise and they were on the rise by the hour. It wasn't a daily thing. It wasn't a weekly thing. It was hourly. When I heard misinformation about COVID-19, people not taking it seriously, people thinking it's just like the flu, I, I was stunned. Especially after seeing how COVID-19 was really affecting our community members, I knew I had to do something to change that. I organized a group of 37 staff and help them to support local health jurisdictions by providing case investigations, contact tracing, and outbreak response in relation to COVID-19. Although I'm organizing the efforts, they're the ones that are pushing it to life. And they're kicking butt. <laughs> I mean, nothing short of that. And just for them to shine in the way that they've been doing so within this public health department is, is just awesome. I am virtually deployed to Imperial County, located by the border of Mexico. Majority of Hispanic, a lot of Spanish speaking. And so a lot of my calls were just giving them information a little bit more about COVID-19 and asking them how they've been feeling. A lot of the resources um, are there, but they're just not aware of it. And so they need that additional support. It's just that language barrier can really make a difference. And so after a simple phone call, checking in on them, they would often say in Spanish, you know, thank you, mija. And that in English is just like, almost saying like, you know, thank you, daughter, is what I would translate it to. So it was just very reassuring to know that I was helping these individuals in any way I can. I'm really helping the general public understand data as well as connecting stakeholders to prepare for the vaccine rollout. Because of a communication that I had with the city of Detroit, they were able to stand up their vaccination clinic that is very efficient, safe, and to know that I played a crucial role in being able to help the city, it makes me feel really, really proud. And so I am just um, really, really fortunate for the experience. My team and I managed to set up a surveillance system for detecting outbreaks in hospitals. We collect information to inform wherever the outbreak may have been, where it's going, where it currently is, how big it is, how everything about it. <laughs> and so far, we've investigated over 50 different outbreaks in healthcare facilities. It's a big job, but I have a fantastic team supporting me, so that makes it achievable. I don't think it, 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 it's not a one-man band sort of thing. It's a whole chorus line. You can't do it alone. Bioinformatics is basically software engineering meets biology. I can take your genetic information and I can look to see if there's anything weird with it. So with COVID-19, I'm looking for variants. And I discovered the first UK variant in the state of Ohio. The coolest thing about my job is I can prevent people from getting ill, dying, and spreading the disease. I love my job. I'm like my dad going to Key West, Florida. He's in his happy place. He loves the fact that he can walk the beach and he can see the iguanas and have Jimmy Buffett play. I love the fact every day I go to work, it's different, it's challenging, but it's also rewarding because at the end of the day, what I'm doing is gonna help the people of Ohio. I think as an epi, I've always prepared myself for the once-in-a-lifetime pandemic. Of course, I thought I would be much older and for more prepared, but I think we'll all look back at this one day and everyone will share their story of where were you during the COVID-19 pandemic and 
I'm gonna have a great one of, I got picked up by the CPC Foundation. They told me to go to the Hobie tribe. Had no idea where that was, but I packed up my car, drove four days and ended up here. It's nice waking up to a job that you feel like you're doing something productive for the world. We have touched and become an integral part of teams all across this country. We did assessments along the way, and it was very clear that we had recruited, hired, and placed top-notch quality public health professionals. We presented them with so many great people. We were very impressed by the quality of the CDC Foundation staff that were provided to us, and they've been excellent to work with. The CDC Foundation staff that came on were the best public health folks from all over the country. They have been awesome and we would really be lost without them. I wear a mask to protect me and you. Please wear yours too. All the people that we've hired really played a huge role in helping our country recover from the different impacts that we've seen. We've absolutely made a difference, and we've seen that in so many different ways. Not only did our CDC Foundation field staff really help the health departments, but many of them now have become permanent staff at the health departments. The health departments have hired them. That's a super success for us. It helps build out that workforce that is so needed. I feel incredibly proud to be part of this effort. The things that we were able to achieve from home and collaborating remotely is such a huge milestone. The work that we're doing is impactful because it's made a difference. I can definitely see the impact. Not only the impact of what we've been able to do in the pandemic, but also just a better understanding just as a team, things that we're capable of at CDC Foundation is pretty mind-blowing. CDC Foundation has really empowered me in becoming the epidemiologist that I really wanted to be. This pandemic showed me that I could do it, and I really hope there's never another one, but at least I think I'm now prepared for it. When I have children, they're going to be able to look back and say that their mom or their grandma was part of history. And it's awesome to be a part of it. It feels really rewarding and just warm inside. That's how I feel. I am proud to be among those people that were making a difference during this time. I have felt humbled by what the foundation has done when I stop and think about it. And I'm humbled by the power of a team. I'm awestruck by it. I'm so proud of the team, but also it's a bit daunting to think about how much more needs to be done. So my hope is that we take these lessons uh, from the, the pandemic and we really apply them in a really powerful way going forward.